A quiet island community on Virginia's eastern shore is turning into a battleground. Yeah, the National Park Service and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are proposing some changes on Assateague Island National Seashore, and it is not sitting well with the folks in the town of Chincoteague. Ten your sites, Art Khan's looking into this story for us. Art, what'd you find out? Well, first of all, Stephanie and Alvita, let me just tell you that formulating a general management plan, which is what this is all about for national parks, is a process that occurs about every 15 to 20 years. And although there are four different proposals under consider consideration, watermen on Chincoteague Island say all have one common denominator that would devastate commercial fishing on the eastern shore. This is what Chincoteague Island is most famous for. The annual pony swim that attracts thousands of tourists and raises money for the local fire department. But for local watermen at Tom's Cove, aquaculture and commercial fishing are the primary sources of income. Without the Tom's Cove area, we're done. All watermen are done. Watermen like Eric Weimer. Weimer says increased regulations from the federal agencies that manage the Assateague Island National Seashore and Wildlife Refuge will put him and other commercial fishermen working in Tom's Cove out of business. They want to change the complexity of the whole island, of the whole way of life. Good afternoon, I'm Robin Rothschild and welcome to the Wallops and Astig Islands Report. In this interview on the local radio station, refuge manager Lou Hines clarifies what has become to many the battle line. Anything below the mean low water is either state jurisdiction or falls into the boundary of the National Park Service. Anything above the mean low water mark is my jurisdiction and would fall under the purview of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Looking at the map, you can see that U.S. Fish and Wildlife has jurisdiction over most of Tom's Cove, and the Park Service's boundary extends a half mile beyond that into the Atlantic Ocean. Although the Virginia Marine Resources Commission has jurisdiction over the submerged lands near shore, state laws must conform to federal regulations. Basically, they, they want to own it all and expect us to pay them to work on something that we have been years uh, building up. Jay Birch is a third generation waterman. He and the other commercial fishermen pay licensing fees to the state to harvest the local seafood, including shellfish from oyster beds on land leased by the state. It's time for the state of Virginia to stand up and tell the federal government to back off and leave us alone. We have given up all that we intend to give up. Regardless of their intentions, watermen, including Jay Birch, may have to give up something that could prove to be more costly than additional fees. All four of the current management proposals under consideration call for prohibiting the harvest of horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe crab fishery is illegal within all National Park Service areas. It had not been enforced at Astig Island National Seashore, and, we're, and as such, that puts us in a bind. Actually, enforcing the ban on harvesting horseshoe crabs might put everyone and everything in a bind. And coming up at 6, we'll talk more about the impact of stopping the horseshoe crab harvest at the Assateague Island National Seashore and a proposal the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is considering that could adversely impact tourism for the town of Chincoteague. Art Khan, 10 on your side.